Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 4th of September and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Sir GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe we'll try to cover the weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for September itself. And I'll get over that for you in a moment, just to say that the first video release there was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We've also released Jerry Friday at the EC42 there. Check out all of today's videos and content. Like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We've got an epic, epic, epic weekend of content coming up for you um, for the Bank Holiday Weekend. I'll tell you all about what's to come at the end of this video. Right, we're going to start off in the uh, tropical Atlantic. So we've got three, three disturbance areas and tropical storm, frankly. Let's deal with the disturbance areas first of all. So we've got a yellow X just here. That is disturbance three with a 20% chance of cyclone formation in the next two days and a 50% chance in the next uh, seven days. We've also got Disturbance 2, which has a 20% chance of cyclone formation in the next two and seven days. And then we've got Disturbance 1, uh, with a 30% chance of cyclone formation in the next two days, but a 70% chance of cyclone formation in the next seven days. This is one to watch, I think. Uh, so they're saying Northwestern Caribbean Sea and the Eastern Gulf Mexico. A broad area of low pressure over the northwestern Caribbean Sea is producing disorganised showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions appear conducive for gradual development of this system during the next several days. And a tropical depression is likely to form late this weekend or early next week while moving generally northward over the, over the northwestern Caribbean Sea and the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Interest in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, Western Cuba and Florida should monitor the progress of this system. If we go just here, we can see that uh, this is predicted to move through the uh, Gulf of Mexico and up towards Florida over the uh, next week or so. Um, so that could well pick up energy as it pushes through the Western Caribbean Sea and the Eastern Gulf of Mexico towards Florida. It might give a hit to Florida. So that is one that we've got to keep an eye on. And then we've got Trouble Storm Franklin uh, just here, which is currently giving maximum sustained winds of 60 miles per hour with a uh, minimum set pressure. The 1,000 millibars heading uh, north, east, northeast was at 6 miles per hour. So we can see that this is predicted to become a hurricane over the weekend. Trouble storm, frankly, just here by Sunday up to hurricane status moving to the west of the Bermuda Islands as a hurricane and uh, heading up towards the northern part of the Atlantic by the middle of next week. How strong is this going to get? Let's have a look. So, uh, forecast to go at um, 96 hours to maximum sustain of 110 miles per hour, 110 miles per hour, which is just short of Category 3. That is just short of a major hurricane. One mile an hour more, if it gets to 111 miles per hour, I believe that would make it Category 3 hurricane, and therefore a major uh, hurricane. By 120 hours, it's weakening down to maximum state of 100 miles per hour as it moves into the cooler waters of the North Atlantic. Will that make it in the end as a major hurricane or will it just stay as a, cat a high end category two? I say just, you know, high end category two is a very, very powerful storm in its own right. Lots going on in the tropical Atlantic and all rather unusual this for an El Nino um, uh, late summer, early autumn. So normally El Nino will have a dampening effect on the tropical Atlantic. And what you can still get hurricanes, um, and tropical storms through through um 
and El Nino uh, late summer and autumn. But the amount of activity we've got going on here is quite unusual for um, an El Nino year. So we shall see what happens and we will keep you updated and up to date with all of the developments. Of course we will. Coming back to home, central temperature is currently sitting at 17 degrees. That's 1.3 degree above the 6199 average. That is provisional to yesterday to the 24th of August. That's going to tick down over the next few days as the weather is turning cooler. Um, so these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation on top. Now, it should be at um, Northampton. For some reason, Penzance is up there, but I thought I've got Northampton up earlier on. I want to see my local <laughs> location. In fact, I see what I'm going to do that anyway. So I'm not sure why that is showing that. So um, I had got this ready and I don't know what happened there. So here we go. Right. So uh, these were GFS. Uh, forget that. Happened. These were GFS up air temperature and precipitation ensembles for Northampton for the next couple of weeks. We're starting off around to below average uh, right now and that carries on two months in through the first week, 10 days of September. We do see our bread temperatures ticking up ever so slightly, but generally hovering and staying pretty close to average, really, right the way through to like the 10th of September. So, no sign of anything particularly exciting happening from an upper air temperature perspective up there. There are a few very warm or hot outliers up here, but they're minimal in their number. And, um, and yes, yeah, so, so just close, close to average, really for the next week or two. Um, precipitation to come as well. So uh, we've got showery uh, conditions over the bank holiday weekend. A little bit drier for the early part of next week. Uh, they may be rather unsettled actually through the opening days of September. We have got some quite big precipitation spikes showing up there towards the latter stages of uh, next week. That might bring some quite wet weather in across the country. And even heading in towards the second week of September, we have got precipitation spikes then as well. Temperature anomalies from the 25th of August, 2nd of September, around to slightly below average. And precipitation anomalies from the 25th of August, 2nd of September, uh, near normal in most places as well. Well, latest weather that from EarthNoSchool.net shows that we've got a trough of low pressure developing in situ close to the country today. That will be increasing the risk of showers. Okay, let's start looking at the chart data. Inside we have the latest UK met Euro run for midnight on Bank Holiday Monday, bringing in a showering northwesterly wind uh, across the country. Further troughs of low pressure pushing in through next week, bringing unsettled conditions at times. That's how we end up with UK met Euro run. There's quite a deep area of low pressure just about southwest. That could be bringing a little bit of soaking into the south for the first day of September and meteorological autumn. Well, well, well. Icon once more with wind in from the northwest on Monday. A little bit on the cool and shallow side. Through the middle of next week, an area of low pressure sinks in from the north. That brings showers along Spurs Bank with it. And then another low coming in off the Atlantic by the end of next week gives us a potentially quite unsettled and wet start to September. GFS midnight run again, showing that northwesterly wind bringing rather cool and showery weather through the early part of next week. An area of low pressure sinks in from the north, bringing showers. And do up long spells rain with more load pressure then taking us through into the second half of next week for the showers to come. You remember yesterday for GFS operational runs we'll try to build up a large area of high pressure through the first week of September. That idea is gone uh, <laughs> today and uh, we're back to rather changeable weather. Some transient ridges coming and going but overall low pressure is the dominating factor right way through to uh, the 10th of September there for GFS midnight run. GFS 6 Z again with that northwesterly flow on Monday, bringing a few showers when low pressure digs in across the country through Tuesday and Wednesday, bringing showers on spells rain. Another area of low pressure bringing potentially some quite wet weather in in the second half of next week, all looking rather mixed and changeable up to day 10. Beyond that, more low pressure piling in from off the Atlantic as we carry on through the first week of September, looking rather inclement there by the 7th of September, a little bit on the wet. And windy side, especially so further north. And the lows keep on coming up to uh, 384 hours, which is as far as we get with GFS runs today, gets us to the 10th of September. So a mix and changeable 
if not exceptionally wet, but certainly a mix and changeable uh, the first 10 days of September there. If you enjoyed the video, please you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much everyone for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much everyone uh, for uh, doing that. We're oscillating between being around 25 and 20 subscribers to get ourselves to 16.7k. So if you could give us a sub, tell your friends and family to subscribe, it would be amazing and it would be incredible. And we will thank you so very much, everybody, uh, for doing that. For guys, well, just please give us a sub. You know you want to. Yeah! <laughs> Can with a winged in from the North Western shower conditions, potentially over bank holiday weekend, and more low pressure heading in from off the Antics for the second half next week. This low could bring some quite wet weather across the country. And then days 9 and 10 turning genuinely wet, windy, and autumnal here with the gem. This gets us to the 4th of September, and that will really blow the cobwebs away. Look how tightly packed those isobars are. Um, though properly wet and windy there uh, with the GM as we get a 965 millibar area of low pressure just to the north of Scotland. Goodness gracious me, that would be um, a bit of an epic <laughs> start to water, wouldn't it? And then, uh, I think it's over top though, and then the ECM looks like that. No bank holiday Monday, rather uh, cool northwesterly winds. They could bring some showers into the north and the west. And then through next week, further areas of low pressure, keep the showering conditions down. We try and build up a ridge there uh, around the 2nd of September. It comes to north as more low pressure rules in from off the Atlantic. And notice by day 10, the ECM is bringing up two either hurricanes or uh, or tropical storms remains of into the North Atlantic. Again, very unusual to see that in uh, in, in an El Nino um, sort of early autumn. So um, we know we've got very, very warm seas over temperature on in the North Atlantic. Um, and it appears that they are having an effect, you know, to give us more active um, uh, tropical storm and hurricane season that you would normally expect in, in, in a typical El Nino uh, scenario. Right, so anyway, let's have a look at the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So showers today, some of them could be quite heavy, especially in central northern and western regions. Further showers uh, tomorrow. Showers continue into Saturday, a little bit drier on Sunday. Uh, and then through next week, further showery bursts coming down. Not a complete washout of the week by any means, but there will be further rain at times, that's day 10, where we still have some quite wet weather this time through Wales and the Midlands, but that wet weather could be anywhere, really, by <laughs> by that point. These are the yacht shopper table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. gets 4th of September. 12 members of the ECM Ensembles with a ridge trying to build to the southwest, but low pressure up to the northwest. That's going to be flat, westerly, and a little bit showering. We've got 11 with low pressure just to our northwest, high pressure to our south southwest. That's looking rather westerly as well. We've got 10, though, placing us under an area of high pressure. That should be mostly dry. 9 with deep low pressure through the country. Uh, 6 with high pressure dominating over the top of the UK. And 3 with a ridge into south and low pressure up to the north. A range of options. Could see some higher pressure there bringing uh, dry weather to the south anyway, but uh, low pressure doesn't look like it's all that far away. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 9th of September, 13 members of the ECM on Sons with a ridge out to our west and southwest. That brings the driest weather into the west. 10 with high pressure over the top of the country. Another 10 with high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic. Low pressure in Scandinavia. That could be a little bit showery winds from the northwest. We've got a further 10 with low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south. That brings most of the set weather into the north. And then we've got 8 with low pressure dominating the weather. So again, we see a lot of uncertainty here at both day 10 and also day 14, 15. Um, and I think it's all down to the activity of in the Atlantic Ocean. You know, in terms of these tropical storms and hurricanes um, making for a lot of uncertainty about what happens with the jet stream and how they interact with the jet stream and, and high pressure, low pressure and whatnot. Sorry, everyone. CFS V2, finally, for September. This is the very latest 700 millibar. Height and only updated a couple of minutes ago. I started recording the video. We changed day by day, remember, but today we're looking at a ridge in the Atlantic going away to our north. 
and a trough low pressure is to the south. Probably quite cool with winds in from a northeasterly direction. The temperature normally actually looks average slightly above the north, but I reckon a cool September could be possible with that one. And uh, no particular signal for precipitation. Um, if high pressure to the north and the northwest, though, probably brings the wettest weather into the south and the driest weather into the north. All are very speculative, and we should wait and see how that transpires. And we'll keep you updated. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please, if you like, share, subscribe, and show the for doing that, why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this, all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gareth Webber's page, show the for doing that. As I say, but I'll say it's between around 20 and 25 <laughs> subscribers um, to get ourselves to 16.7k. If you could give us a sub, we would be so incredibly much grateful. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Right, I'm going to tell us coming up over the weekend. It's going to be epic, 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 epic. Weekend of content. So tomorrow, Saturday, got 16 music broadcast. Have weekend broadcast. We will have the third and final autumn 2023 season one roundup, and we'll be a 10 to 14 day or two. On Sunday, again, a 16 UK weather forecast. The autumn forecast will be released and revealed on Sunday at 10 a.m. We're going to reveal all with our autumn forecast. And if that wasn't enough, we've got the final Gaz Web is Sunday round of the season to come. I mean, at 6 p.m., we will be live streaming. Yes, we will. We'll live stream our 10 to 14 there and include loads and loads of long range in that. I'll take questions about the autumn forecast as well. And then, after all of that, I'll be ready to collapse in a heap on the floor and have <laughs> the day off on uh, Monday. So, on Bank Holiday Monday, uh, we're going to have, of course, 6 p.m. forecast as ever, but we will also have a historic weather video. We're going to be looking at the winter of 1880, 1881, going back a long, long time into the midst of the past. And uh, that includes an incredibly cold sub-zero CT January. So if you like cold, snowy charts, that's that's going to be uh, one for you. You'll see lots of cold-looking snowy charts in our historic weather video on Bank Holiday Monday. An epic weekend of content, so please keep checking back to the channel for more, but for this video and for today's video, that's all for now, and thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.